So actually, you know, I'm pleased to be meeting you properly, if you like. I'm just passing on my experiences I've had over 40 years. Mm. More importantly, I wanted to meet you and talk to you and, and, and not just breeze past you in and say hi, and that was it. So okay. here we are. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you think, Mark, but I think I think I think the government realised that um, the housing market is so important to the to the economy, and and that you know when you buy a house, you know you buy carpets, you buy curtains, you buy furniture, you do this, you do that, and um, and that's why it will be what it's they've confirmed, haven't they? I think it's one of the first things mm -hmm. to come back will be will be, and and we've got interestingly. You know, we're, we're all chomping at the bit, obviously, our, our state agents business to get going. And we've got quite a lot of demand, which is really what Mark was saying when you were earlier, Mark, about, you know, I think the first six months there'll be a bit demand in the domestic market. Um, there's a lot of pent up demand. And I think with Brexit and everything else, people held back. And now I think hopefully they'll get on. And I'm very hopeful they'll buy 100 odd flats down on Ipswich waterfront off me as well. But we can, we can but hope. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, I agree. I think you know the uh, the property market is really what the the, the yardstick for the economy, totally. and, and yeah. uh, it, it, everything revolves around it so much. Mm. Uh, and 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 you know the agents are a key um, cog in that wheel, really. Yeah, really key. And I think I think the other. I mean, I, I see the property market really being driven normally by employment. And what obviously concerns us all is that, you know, people are going to come back from furloughed and, you know, we've furloughed 40 odd staff um, and they're all going to come back, not all together, but they'll start coming back as we go. But even we need, you know, we, you know, we need half a million, 600 grand to get through the first six months uh, when we come back because we're 150 grand a month to run or something, you know, it's not rocket science. You, You've got, you know, you're not going to get any money in apart from the pipeline, which hopefully some of that pipeline will remain. And at the moment we haven't lost much, but we'll lose more when we come back, I'm sure. Mm. Um, but we'll need, you know, 600 grand, which we've got, fortunately, um, to, to get through the first six months. Um, what, what we're hoping, obviously, is that a lot of our competition haven't got that money. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely need that to get through the first six months because we'll get no commission in for the first three months. Mm. It's like starting again almost. So, okay, we've got the stock. Um, but, I mean, there's, the casualties are going to come, I think, Mark, between the third and nine month, ninth, ninth month when we come out. But all yeah. different types of businesses. And I think employment will clearly go up. And normally that means uncertainty and uncertainty, even if people have got, um, got a good job. You know they're almost embarrassed to move home you know um which is ridiculous of course because yeah. if they're moving up they're better off to move because they're because you know they they might be dropping 30 grand might they in their house but the one they're buying might have dropped 100. Mm. so if they're going up 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 market if you like it, it's <laughs> the best thing you can possibly do in this market but Absolutely. in convincing people that is very difficult yeah no i i, I agree i think uh you know the 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 trouble is that the, the, the shock the shock to the economy is it's something I don't think we've ever experienced apart from wartime. Um, I agree. And, you know, none of us have experienced that, um, a, no. a, proper, a proper war, you know, and in terms of a world war. So no. we don't know the net effects of, of what's going to happen. We, we can go look back and see what happened at the end of the First World War and the Second World War. Yeah. Uh, which can be comparable because uh, I think it was the was it the first world war was followed by the pandemic or was it the second one I can't remember. Well, more people died in that pandemic than yeah. died in the war. Imagine if you mark. Imagine if you got through the trenches of 1918, came home, yeah. and then got the bloody plague, the, the uh, flu, bird flu. You'd be well, not only you'd be gutted, you'd probably be dead. So that I mean, is. But, it's, but it, that, <laughs> can you imagine it? You know, I mean, well, it's, it's, uh, it's just unbelievable. The world entered a depression, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. 20s, absolutely. In the thirties, so I don't think we went that far uh, because no. while one, the financial institutions are much stronger now; they're much yes. stronger than they were in two thousand and eight. Uh, yeah, well, they've, yeah, I, I agree entirely with that, Mark. I mean, they've all been stress tested to the nth degree, yeah. and I think um, the problem with the banks is not going to be they haven't got the money. I don't think that, but will they lend? Yeah. because they because of how cautious they are and, and okay you know 
for you, people like you and me, Mark, who are borrowing probably at times only 50%, 60%, that's not going to be a problem. Mm. But if you are borrowing 80% or 70%, 75% on a bridge and all this sort of stuff, you know, 15%, 20% interest, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Because they're just so going to, you know, withdraw withdraw the loan or when it when it runs out they're not going to renew and the other thing is they're going to offer terms at lower loans you know loan ratio so that's going to be a big problem for people well that's why that's why i think developers in particular are, are mm -hmm. for a bit of a sticky time because i think yeah thanks thanks for that mark <laughs> <laughs> but you know i'm sure you'll appreciate that there's, there's yeah, going to be mark, down valuations of, yeah. of the end product the gdb is going to come down the bank's going to turn around and say, "Well, hang on a second. Our security's not yeah. now covered." Uh, yeah, spot on. I mean, we're we're really lucky that our main our main and we borrowed twenty million off the government to do um, our scheme in Ipswich, um, and and we're fortunate it's the government really, so mm. they can hardly charge us interest when it's all their fault. So that's the good news for us. Um, and our most of our borrowings are are, are, are are pretty, you know, geared to to investment stuff. Or we've got three or four other smaller developments. Uh, 25 one place number 15 somewhere else 10 somewhere else but they're all finished so you know from that point of view uh, you know life is about timing mark isn't it and yeah. um uh, you know and, and in any property cycle the only time we make really good money to be honest with you is after after a recession you know we have perhaps a three-year window where we haven't got so much competition um and where we can really you know put our foot to the floor knowing that the market's going up not down um uh, and in, in you said over the years i've made more money coming out of a recession than any time in, in a hot market i don't know about you mark but in a hot market I, i'm 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 hopeless hopeless yeah. in a hot market because everyone else pays more than me everyone yeah. else wants to <laughs> wants to work on less margins than i do yeah. uh, everyone else almost almost builds in an inflation of 10 percent for the year mm. we don't <laughs> so um I find it very frustrating um, in that type of uh, sorry sorry in that type of in that type of market because I really am no better than anyone else. In fact, I'm probably worse than everyone else because I'm not buying at all. So do you, so do you see you know from from a developer's perspective yeah the end product do you see any discounting likely to happen over the next six nine months? Well, of course like I have to say no, don't I to that, Mark? Um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think the, the one, the interesting thing I would say is this, that I think it's more uncertainty than discount, because I think what we'll find, if you take our development down on the waterfront, we've got, you know, probably 70 odd flats left to sell. So the more expensive flats are mainly cash buyers. And those cash buyers are very confident about themselves, about the market, probably, that they already own a property in that market. So um, a lot of them are cash as well. So they're looking for a lifestyle change and if they want to buy they're likely to carry on and buy to be honest with you because they've got the money okay it might go down but it might it'll go up in the long run i think the biggest problem or challenge we have is with first-time buyers who um, although they've got the help to buy scheme on which has been brilliant by the way i think that they you know they've got their parents perhaps lending them 10 grand or Perhaps they can't lend them that 10,000 now, you know, and that type of thing. It's that sort of mm -hmm. uncertainty, which I think will affect, affect us in the longer term. Um, but we'll just have to see, Mark. I mean, I was talking to a big house builder the other day, a friend of mine, who said, you know, well, we're not going to be discounting anything. We'll sit there and sweat it out. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. it's brave talk, isn't it, Mark? But we all know after, we all say that. <laughs> <laughs> but after a few a few months we might change you know we might have to revisit that situation shall we say but we'll i mean we just don't you're absolutely right what you said earlier mark we just don't know and you know no market and you've got it you spot on when you said that you know the market is distorted you know we it's never happened before ever ever so we just everyone's got in their breath when we come back and seeing how the first three months go. And I actually think the first three months might go do well. And I think the second three months might not do too badly. I think it's after that that I think we're going to have perhaps more of an issue. And also the fact that I think the market is probably two tier. You've got the domestic market where, you know, 
there is a, a built up demand perhaps to buy a little bit because of the year time of year as well and then you've got the what i call the dealing market the investment market our market if you like um and i think that's going to be um, affected um quite severely for yeah. certain people for certain yeah. people I, th I think with of course at the end of the year we've got <laughs> apparently brexit um deal finalizing yes. We don't know yes. what the effect of that's going to be, but the, no. the best guesstimates on that were an initial shock to GDP of a few percent. Now, bear yes. in mind, they're, ex they're predicting, uh, I think it was something like a 30%. It was, yeah, it was. And they had another few percent on top of that going into 2021. Well, yeah, it, it's interesting, Mark, isn't it? Because it actually makes Brexit look a bit, a bit of a bore now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, a few percent. Oh, what's a few percentage when you could lose thirty percent? I mean, I have to say, the one thing I would say is all these so-called experts have never got it right yet. No. Um, you know, with the Brexit thing, you know, they all came out and said the worst scenario could be a thirty percent drop in property prices. What happened? They all started going up. Now I know we're not there yet. You could argue, oh, well, that was, you know, we're not out yet. So I don't know. Uh -huh. My, I've got a bit of an ear to the because I'm chairman of the Ipswich Conservatives. I've got a tiny ear, and it is tiny ear okay. to what's happening. And I'm told that they're not going to change the date, and they're sticking to it, and they'll be coming out. End of. I think, um, I think they've got to. I think they've got to. I think. And yeah. I think I think probably they've probably got to. Now, what that means, I'm not. I haven't. Although I was a, a keen Brexiteer, I don't, and I campaigned for it. I don't know quite what that actually means because we've signed an agreement with them of course so you know i mean they can't even agree on the fisheries thing at the moment if they can't agree on that there's no point doing anything else from what i can see um and of course they want us to be in a line with them for tax purposes and and um competition purposes and all this well why the hell do we want to do that for <laughs> to yeah. me that's the last thing we want to do and in fact ireland ireland who are meant to be in alignment drop their capital drop their um corporation tax to 12 and a half percent when they weren't allowed to and are so-called being sued allegedly by european union well we know that's not going to happen yeah of course not uh, and it's 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 saved ireland over the last few years yeah so made, made them attractive country to invest in which at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do isn't it <laughs> well i i think we'll do the same yeah. one way or the other i think have um I think we'll have to. I don't see, I don't see any uh, any other way, uh, Mark. I, I don't know about you, but I mean, the, the one thing they threaten us with is this: this financial, our financial services are one of the biggest in the world, aren't they? In London, city of London, and everything. Yeah. Actually, I don't quite understand it all, but they're saying, "Oh well, we'll we'll ban you from being in doing whatever you want, whatever you can do in Europe." But I'm not sure that what it's possible these days because you could be working from anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, and, and most people, interestingly, all these heavy hitters that come from all around the world to work in London to the into the city to work. None of them want to move to 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 Brussels. They don't want to move to Paris. They don't want to, most of them want to stay in the UK, want to stay in London. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, that will drive it, I think. Well I think I think we'll see. a number of companies moved initially, but they're starting to come back. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. And we haven't had that great I think the bigger problem, by the way, for for the for the commercial we've got, i've got a bit of commercial is that you know you've got suddenly everyone realizes they can work from home yeah yeah uh, and all these big office blocks in london and things a friend of mine um his solicitor said to him the other day he was going they were going to move to a very smart new office for four hundred fifty thousand a year rent they're in they're paying 90 at the moment they were going to move to some big flash offices in the west end and uh, they've just had a meeting via zoom with the partners and they decided they're not moving. They're just going to get their staff, some of their staff can, on a road to can work from home. <laughs> and they're going to save themselves 300,000 quid. Nice. So, wow. well, you can't blame them, can you? Mm. They're all capable of working from home. All solicitors are these days. Yeah. And, um, you know, you do wonder, you know, you think they slog themselves in every day on the train probably to London mm. and back again and all the rest of it. It's all time they could be working. Ah, but the biggest um, biggest question for solicitors, though, will it improve their efficiency? Well, isn't it funny that now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, these bloody solicitors can exchange and complete on the same day. Oh, now, wow. I don't know about you, Mark, <laughs> but over the years, I've been told, and I'm sure you have as well, oh, no, it's not possible to exchange complete the same day. It's too much paperwork to do. We need a week in between times to draw the monies down and all this crap. Yeah. Well, clearly, yeah. turns out they don't after all, Mark. 
Oh yeah. Well, I think if you if you pay enough money, I mean, as a friend of mine um, buys just buys commercial property cash, yeah. uh, and and he has everything done within a week. The whole yeah, lot. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and and, 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 and you know, I mean, I've used my my I've used the same solicitor. I've worked very closely with him for 30, 35 years, and uh, you know, I've moved around with him, and then he opened his own business and you know supported it. And, um, you know, he's exchanged contracts for me on, well, he does too many holidays these days, but he's still exchanging contracts for me in Barbados and on a cruise and <laughs> wherever he is in the world, he's still working and exchanging contracts for me when he's away on holiday. So, you know, sometimes I have to wait till, till after he's had his dessert. <laughs> so asking, what, you know, I, the other day he was in, before this happened, he was in Naples on a holiday and I rang him up or texted him, I think, and I said, what are we doing? Have you bloody exchanged on this yet? He said, no, but it's all set up. I'm just going to have my pudding and coffee and then I'll be exchanging for you, John, this afternoon. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> so, you know, it's a different world, Mark, isn't it? We're in now with probably similar ages. It's a different world. Mm, totally, um, totally. It really is. And of course, you know, we don't really know where it's all going. But um, So I wanted to ask you since um, on yeah. that point there, John, and uh, Mark as well, uh, so there are many, you know, property investors that are not in the position, uh, not in the position that you're in and uh, would like to would like to have a bit of clarity on, you know, what they can do during this this period. I mean, what's you know, what's one, two tips that you guys can share? Um, well, it's strange enough, we were, we're having this conversation this morning with uh, a small group of our mentees and uh, they're they're all of the kind of mindset well, what can I do because you know I can't go and view a property but there are still transactions being done and that's the, that's the thing um, interesting you know, and, and there are still deals that can be done um, but we, we've kind of focused their efforts more on you know, researching their market um, looking at the potential deals that could be there you know we've got okay. one of our uh, mentees who's focusing on land she's already scoped a hundred deals ready to start the initial bit of work once once she can actually get out on the road again. A hundred yeah. deals. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah. impressive. But to be fair, Mark, she can get out on the road now. There's nothing stopping her. That would be yeah. my advice. Yep. Yeah. So that's but, the next step. <laughs> no yeah. competition. Yeah. So there is there is yeah. there is stuff that can be done, but for those that are a bit cautious, it's it's yeah, research, research your market, check out if you're just starting out. Yeah. Check out a lot of things. Uh, there's no, there's no rush mark, is there? My, <laughs> yeah, my view is, you know, never catch a falling knife. And we don't know if the knife is falling. I accept that, but until we do yeah. know, there's no point in taking silly risks. And actually, you're best to wait. You're best to wait for it to bounce off the floor before you invest. If you, if if, if we know when that might be. Yeah. You know, there's I, no, I there's feel no, that there's no rush. Property's not a quick. Property takes time. Yeah. You know, auctions are the quickest um, barometer of the market. Auctions are the, are, the, are the quickest barometer to find out what the market is doing, auctions. But the rest of the market is much slower than auctions and it takes time to, takes time to you know, stop and recover. Um, I like that example that you used, John. I like the example right. that you used, um, an indicator where it, when you're looking at car prices, and if yes, they're dropping yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier, well, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's someone, a really someone, good example. Someone, someone blew me out of that one the other week a bit because they said, Why? oh, yeah, well, your, your idea that car, when car prices start, new car prices, uh, new cars stop, stop selling, you know, um, properly follows, which in the, in the whole, I think Mark would hopefully agree with me. Of course, they then said, well, it's all very well, but it's all because of the electric car at the moment. And I said, well, yeah, uh... you've got to call it that. But, um, but in the past, that's been a fairly good barometer in the past. Hmm. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Mark? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still, still a skeptic on the electric car and the, the actual effects of them, to be honest. So, yeah, um, me too. Me yeah. too. But I mean, it's, I mean, they just don't want to, I mean, Porsche, for instance, aren't making any more diesel cars. Hmm. All, you know, they're going all electric, which I don't know about you, but if I'm on the road, I need, I need a car that can do four or five hundred miles a day without yeah. needing to stop for god knows how many times and and uh and and charge the bloody thing up so i'm still i'm still old school mark i'm still old school. Oh, so am I. I have to say yeah. i'd like the stand of an engine so <laughs> <laughs> and that's really not that's not good for the environment at all mark that is <laughs> did I, you I hear about the diesel scandal to be quickly and cheaply 
Sorry, what was that? For? Did you hear about the, the the diesel scandal? How um they they sold us uh, well Volkswagen sold us on yeah. on the um, the benefits of of having diesel. They got everyone on diesel, and then years clean, later they clean, found clean out clean engines. Yeah, clean engines, and then years later yeah. you find out that, that well that's the European Union for yeah. you. To be fair, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. Ban them all. For, I mean, in Germany, I think they're banned from 2022, aren't they? Diesels something like or something crazy. 2024, or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's mad. But anyway, well, but look, yeah, Mark, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. What well, one more thing that I wanted to mention? Mm. Bringing it back to um, bringing it back to you know, advising individuals, you know, like myself who are who are you know. Uh, getting into the property industry or people that are ahead of me that are a bit more seasoned and that yes. need that guidance. I feel that, you know, it's more, it's more important than ever to have someone that's been there and done that, that can yeah, see I through agree. corners and that can help you, you yeah. know, make that right decision. A lot of us think that we can just go and, um, you know, scout through the internet when we can find a dozen of, um, you know, we can find all the information on the internet. That's fair enough, yeah. but it's kind of like, you know, a, a puzzle that's just scattered around mm. who's going to put that together for you you yeah. know you might be you might be misinformed and make that wrong decision just because you didn't want to well, be you know you didn't want to be guided by someone that's been there and done yeah. that i feel that yeah you know, I, want I mean the one the one thing i would say and mark mark's a true what i call a true educator as well as a, a successful pr property investor and so on whereas my type of sort of education if you like if that's what you want to call it is all about making sure they don't make some of the mistakes i've made in a way and you can only do that and mark can only do that because he's got experience and we've both got experience that's the only reason we can do that yeah. if yeah. you've been at the business five minutes then there's no way you can then advise people especially in a difficult market what to do uh, yeah, and what to avoid and i think that to me is you know I tend to speak about my my experiences and because I've produced, developed and and built developed in most areas of the country and I've done you know most types of development I can really tell everyone what the pitfalls are of every one of those uh, types of developments and what to make sure it's what to avoid but how on earth can someone do that if they've only been you know doing only in been in property two or three years themselves. Uh, and has started teaching, telling people how to do it. It's just ridiculous. One hundred percent, totally. I, I, I think I know, that, I'm sure Mark feels the same way. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to say actually on on our mentorship group last year, we had a, a, a young lad. I say young, thirties. Uh, that's young, up. Mark. That's young. Well, it is for me. Yeah. So <laughs> and me. Um, but he stood up. Uh, I said, "What? Well, yeah, okay. What's, what's your goals? What, what you can try and yeah. do?" It says, um, okay, I've already done a few flips. I'm now going to write a book and I'm going to start running a training course to teach people how to do it. I'm so <laughs> done. And you just I'm think, so really? I feel, that, I feel that during this time, guys, I feel that during this time, the true leaders will come out and put yeah, chaos into okay. order. I th All I the people that had the fluff will disappear. Yeah, I think the thing is, right, and I've, I've always adopted this philosophy. I, I, I needed a teacher when I was younger. As I went into my first job, I needed a teacher. And when it's, as my role changed, I needed someone to teach me, a teacher. You know, as, as I went into different managerial roles, I needed someone else, someone to show me that role. Yeah. I don't think this is any exactly. different. I know there's a lot of bad press, uh, or so let's put it this way, keyboard warriors that attack the, the property education industry. And, yeah. and in some cases, quite rightly so. But when I, I, I'm quite an experienced business person. I've been in business over 30 years. Yeah, yeah I still went to get tall and get, found myself a mentor to show mm -hmm. me. So I didn't yeah. make mistakes. I wanted a, a quick start. I, you know, exactly. Not business yeah. college. But, 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 Mark, could, but, but, also, but also, Mark, you know, due, due respect, you were a very accomplished businessman, businessman in the first place mm -hmm. with money. And your life experiences told you really what you could do. Someone's just helped you to sharpen up you know really your senses and to and to not make you know to speed the process up um and and, and what i find difficult is then they get they get, they get someone on stage who they've helped these people and who has been who is very bright and would have done it anyway one way or the other themselves and you know some of these people would have been good in any business they just chose property 
and they they and they put them up there as an example look they can do it means anyone can do it and that's just not true and i think that's the only thing i've got i've got against some of the property educators is that you know they they are present present you know you're a property man but some of these people are they're present present they're presenters and they can they could be presenting or selling buying and selling diamonds um buying and selling on the stock market you know they're that bloody good at presenting they yeah. could they could sell ice to eskimos these guys and girls <laughs> and i i think that's dangerous yeah. and i i'm passionate about the, the business being regulated i just think having come into it very very late and as a bit of fun almost really for me um not as a proper you know, not not as a mainline business income or anything else i've looked at it and i just i cannot believe it's not regulated you know financially regulated mm -hmm. in some way and uh, the sooner that happens whether it's possible god only knows but the sooner that happens, I think the better. And the good guys then are on one side, and the ones up, you know, the ones who who don't like being regulated will hopefully leave the industry. Yeah, one hundred percent. I feel that this is the time when it is going to happen. As I mentioned before, during this period, the true leaders will shine, and it's inevitable, and it will be clear cut on who has experience and who's just waffling on, you know, something that they've regurgitated on other people's uh, material. Yep. So uh, yep. I feel that this is, this, is the, this is the true time when we draw that yep. line. So I'm, I'm really happy for you guys um, in this period. Thank you very much. And Mark, thank you very much for coming on and having a chat. And I'll give you, I'll exactly. drop you a, an email shortly. Okay. And um, let's see, what, see if there's anything we can do together. I'm happy to, you okay. know, if you want, if, what we did with Cambridge United when I was a director there, we had the odd, um, um, you know, the manager would do the coaching and then now and again, he'd bring someone else in, a mate of this, to, to G them up once a month or something and do a slightly different <laughs> different presentation to the players. Yeah, I like that. So yeah. if you ever want me to do that, vice versa, then I'll be delighted to. Yeah, likewise. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mark. Okay. It's great talking to you. Likewise, John. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not.